Okay, welcome back Physics 30. In the previous video we were looking at curve space and looking at how we could determine if we're in curve space. So we're looking at the saddle structure here. So if we, the larger the circle we draw, the more it wraps around on this side and wraps around the other side. So the circumference is, if we actually measure the circumference, it's bigger than if we take the radius here multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi. So the circumference of the circle is greater than that some of the angles in the triangle, and so this would be said to have a negative curvature, so a saddle-like structure is have, or has negative curvature. Okay, so if you look at the curvature of the universe, so what about the universe? On a large scale, not just near a large mass, what is the overall curvature of the universe? Does it have positive curvature, like a globe, or negative curvature, like a, a saddle structure? Or is it flat, with zero curvature? We perceive our world as Euclidean flat, but we cannot exclude the possibility that space could have a curvature so slight that we don't normally notice it. This is a crucial question in cosmology, and it can be answered only by precise experimentation. If the universe had a positive curvature, the universe would be closed or finite in volume. This would not mean that stars and galaxies extend out to a certain boundary beyond which there is empty space. There is no boundary or edge such in the like that in the universe. The universe is all there is. If a particle were to move in a straight line in a per particular direction, it would eventually return if it was, if the universe was like this. The particle goes in one direction, comes back to the start eventually. On the other hand, if the curvature space was zero or negative, the universe would be open. It could go just on forever. An open universe could be f infinite. But according to our recent research, even that may not necessarily be so. Today the evidence is very strong that the curvature on a large scale is very close to being flat, so it continues to extend out forever. Indeed, it is so close to being flat that we wouldn't be able to really tell if it is slightly positive or slightly negative curvature. Okay. The last thing we're going to look at here quickly is our black holes. According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, or GR, space-time is curved near massive objects. So evidence that space gets curved around objects just like this. Um, we might think of space as being like a thin rubber sheet. If a heavy weight is placed in the sheet, it sags down. And you would have seen this shape uh, sometimes in donation bins. You can take your quarter and just fling it around. It goes around and around and around and around then eventually goes down into where the coin gets collected. So, but if we had, and I've been wanting to make this, I'll, I'll maybe try to make one. Um, if you had a, a, uh, a rubber sheet or a stretchy sheet and extend it among an edge and just throw like a, a large marble or a ball bearing, it would sag downwards because that ball bearing is a massive object. So it causes space to be curved inwards like this. And of course, anything else in here, if I take a coin here or a ball, let it go, it falls a geodesic straight down into there. And you can see it's going to be a curved space. Um, so the weight corresponds to a huge mass that causes space itself to be curved. Thus, in the context of general relativity, we do not speak of a force of gravity acting on the object. So usually we see a force that's somehow pulling it in, but it's due to curving space beside it. So if there was no curve, the a ball would just stay there. But since I have a massive object, it causes this to be curved, everything will fall towards it. So if we look here, we do not experience a force of gravity acting on objects. Instead, we say that the objects and light rays move as they do because space-time is curved. An object starting at rest or moving slowly near the great mass would follow a geodesic, as I mentioned, straight line path. According to you, if you're on a, a plane, but actually it's a curved path, uh, so the, the equivalent of a straight line in plane geometry towards the great mass. The extreme curve, now, of course, a planet wouldn't quite be this curved. This is more of a visual picture of what we would perceive a black hole to look like. So the extreme curvature, as we see here, could be produced by a black hole. It has such a strong gravity that even light goes, doesn't get deflected, but it just simply goes right into the black hole and can't escape. And to become a black hole, uh, we'd have to have a mass undergoing a gravitational uh, uh, collapse, contracting by gravitational self-attraction within a radius. So, of course, stars undergo this, and uh, we have a huge, small area with a huge mass, and, of course, really 
curving space and time. Okay, they, they, talk, they talk about a Schwarzschild radius here, but we're not going to worry about that because, again, we're just going to look at a qualitative aspect of this. So this uh, Schwarzschild radius tells us what the minimum radius is for this to happen. Um, and it talks about, uh, represents the event horizon of a black hole. By event horizon, we mean the surface beyond which no emitted singles, signals could ever reach us. And this informs of, informing us of happenings close to the surface. As a star collapses towards a black hole, the light it emits is pulled harder and harder by gravity, but we can still see it. Once the matter passes within the event horizon, the emitted light cannot escape and is pulled back down due to gravity. So if you have light kind of extending out from the black hole, it's simply pulled back in. There's an area there where it simply can't leave anymore. It just simply gets pulled back in. All we know about black holes is its mass, its angular momentum, and its electric charge. No other information, no details of a structure, or the kind of matter it was formed of can be known since we can't see anything because no information escapes. It's like we see a black on black. So how might we observe black holes if we simply can't see them? Because light is not escaping, so we won't be able to see it. But of course, uh, so no light can escape. They would appear, appear black against the black sky, but they do exert gravitational force on nearby objects and also on light rays that pass nearby. So the black holes, uh, believed to be the center of our, gra our galaxy, was discovered by examining what happens to things close to it. If we can see that, oh my gosh, things are getting super curved in one direction, light is getting bent in that direction, that can be the indication of a black hole. All right, so that is the end of that section. So looking at um, the equivalence principle between um, that Einstein made up, the idea that acceleration in one direction is equal and opposite to gravity in the other direction, the, ex the thought experiment with light showing that if we accelerate a body upwards, a light beam gets deflected downwards, or from our view it appears to be, even though it's going straight across, since our object is moving up, it gets bent. And the equivalence principle says there's no experiment to distinguish between accelerating upwards or gravity in the opposite direction. So that tells us that gravity could bend light. And we came up with that, that it does it by curving space and time, looking at what curved space is, by looking at examples on a planet, or different shapes with positive or negative curvature and then looking at kind of what that curved space does and looking that maybe it's not gravity that's some weird force but it's due to manipulating space and time around that object that causes objects to be deflected. Alright, we'll see you again.